Hello folks, it's Chris Yost at Wesley, and it is a great day to gather together. Um, wherever you're at today, I pray that you're taking just a few moments um, to remember your life has its being in God and, and to uh, use this time as a chance to connect with, with um, God's life-giving grace for today. We're reading Psalm 7 today. This is a little bit longer, almost divided into two, but I thought, eh, we'll go through and just uh, read it as one 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 unit. But in there, there's this back and forth. Uh, matter of fact, uh, um, in the New Revised Standard Version, the, the title is A Plea for Help Against Persecutors. And in the Hebrew titling of this... Um, that's kind of a, a an impromptu song um, about Cush, um, a Benjamite. Um, basically, there's there's conflict in the family. There's conflict that's going on, and um, you're going to notice um, for David, anyone set against him is considered evil and wicked. Now, David does say, "If I have caused harm, if I've done wrong, then repay me, God." But then he also calls God down on these other folks. So, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I think a word of caution as we read this, um, we still have a tendency to think that whatever we believe is what God believes. And sometimes we have to be able to say, ah, I might have been on the wrong side of this one. Um, Lord, forgive me and let me uh, do right as we move forward. So just because we're what we want to do um, doesn't always make it God's will. And, and David's wrestling with a little bit of that here. But uh, again, these are the emotions we, we, we experience and pouring out before God. So, all right, Psalm 7. I'm not going to pause a lot. It's a little longer. Here we go. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and deliver me, or like a lion, they will tear me apart. They will drag me away with no one to rescue. O oh Lord, my God, if I have done this, if there are wrongs in my hands, if I have repaid my ally with harm or plundered my foe without cause, then let the enemy pursue me and overtake me, trample my life to the ground and lay my soul in the dust. Rise up, O Lord, in your anger. Lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered around you and over it take your seat on high. The Lord judges the people. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that it is mine, that is in me, excuse me, that it is in me. O oh, let the evil of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous. You who test the minds and hearts, O oh, righteous God, God is my shield who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge and a God who has indignation every day. If one does not repent, God will wet his sword. He has bent and strung his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapons, making his arrows fiery shafts. See how they conceive evil and are pregnant with mischief, and bring forth lies? They make a pit, digging it out, uh, and fall into the hole that they have made. Their mischief returns on their own heads, and on their own heads their violence descends. I will give to the Lord the thanks due to His righteousness, and sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. There, um, I think I think there's a good word for us in verse three through five, and um, in it, it's a good way when conflict emerges or when we're having difficulty with others. It's a good place to start to say, "Wait a minute! If I've done this, if there's wrongs on my hands, you know what? Have I 
gone through and treated a friend harmfully or have I caused even a person who might be a foe, it says, or, or maybe someone I don't agree with, but have I provoked them? Um, then let me be pursued. You know, let me be held accountable is basically what he's saying. Um, that's not a bad act uh, at all. Um, but he almost says that in a self-justification role, which is, um, um, which is a little bit like, oh no, come on, David, <laughs> you're better than that, right? Um, who hasn't prayed verse 9? Let the evil of the wicked come to an end and establish the righteous. Have you ever had those times when it seems like the thieves seem to be getting away with it? Or those who, um, you know, uh, tell half-truths and seem to profit from it, right? Um, that is that is an ongoing prayer, and you're going to find that not just in the Psalms, but throughout the entire New Testament, Old Testament, the whole thing is a plea that, golly, God, can't this world just work where truth reigns, right? We just tell the truth um, where righteousness reigns. Uh, anyway, um, let's let's pray. Lord, you are our shield, and God, we pray to be the upright in heart who experience your salvation. Lord, um, help us to share that gift with others. Help us not to um, treat it like a <laughs> like a commodity. The 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 more you use, the less you have, right? Um, but God, remind us that the commodity of, commodity of heaven is love. But the more that we use, the more that we have access to. And so, God, with that freedom, with that ability to love la lavishly. Um, to love generously without holding back. Um, God, I pray for the folks that are listening to these words. May they have that inspiration. May they have that gift in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen.